on. We can do better than that. Yes. Amen. Amen. Isn't it wonderful that when the girls are gone, we got talent around here that can fill in to do that praise and worship? Let's give them a hand praise for that, huh? For us that can't sing, we really appreciate that. Amen? Amen? Or am I the only one that can't sing? <laughs> Uh, how about I need a couple of fellows to take up the uh, offering this morning? Greg, you want to say the blessing, brother? Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you for all those that came out today, Lord. We just thank you for uh, Jeff, Lord. We ask that you uh, place your anointing upon him as he brings forth the, your word, Lord, the word that you've spoken into his heart, and just let him have clear speech and a uh, and just uh, bring forth his message uh, clearly and completely, Lord. We just ask that you open our hearts and our ears that we receive what you have to say to us this morning. We ask that you bless this offering, the gift as well as the giver. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, before we get started this morning, I, I have an announcement that uh, next week is Father's Day uh, weekend. And there will be no PM service, uh, so uh, it will just be the AM service. Um, I will say that Lori and I, we do get the opportunity, just like Enoch and Teresa, that we've been going out and ministering quite a bit, and we'll be back at Brian again next weekend, and the door, uh, Lord's opening the door of ministry for, their, uh, for us there, and, and uh, this will be our third time back in about a month and a half, and, and it's, a, it's a special uh, uh, opportunity for Lori and I, and, and we're thankful for that. Um, but once again, there'll be no PM service so that the men can enjoy uh, their family. Amen? Father's Day, what a great day, huh? I don't think it means as much as Mother's Day. But you know, isn't it great how God put man and woman together to make a family? Huh? Huh? I've always said marriage is one of, the, one of the greatest things you can ever have, is being married to your soulmate, the the. The bone of your bone and flesh of your flesh. It is one of the greatest things. But the, 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 the dessert on that is, is the kids. And at the time, you may not think it's dessert. It's not really that, that enjoyable, but it truly is. A fruit of a good marriage is, is kids. And the fruit of a really good marriage is grandkids. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> you get to enjoy them and you don't have to really discipline them, huh? <laughs> you get to really enjoy them and, and send them home, but we don't like to send them home. We really do enjoy them, and, and we do like it when they're around. And, of course, ours are all off to Myrtle Beach right now with Pastor Terry and Mrs. Terry, and, and we miss them, but uh, um, they'll be back, and we'll get to enjoy them again. Amen? You know, a few weeks ago, I got the opportunity to minister here on a, on a Sunday night, and, and my message was uh, out of Habakkuk and was talking about vision. And uh, he, he says to write the vision down on the tablet. And, and I talked about the vision of this church. You know, anybody that's been coming to church here realizes that we're, we're preparing as a, as a board to uh, add on to the church because of the growth of our youth and our congregation. And everybody can say, hallelujah. Yeah. Huh? Can we say Hallelujah. hallelujah. You know, the harvest is coming and the Lord is preparing a, a family. He's preparing a, a, a people, a, 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 an army. Amen? So we talked about that vision. And that vision, you know, down the end, we, we, we said it was really not about the building. It was about souls. Amen? And that is our main purpose is when we come to church to receive the word and to be encouraged and to encourage each other, our main purpose is to be built up so that we can go touch souls, right? Souls for the glory of the Lord. You know, as I grow older and I mature and I look back on the things of life that I've done, I come to a realization that my main purpose in life now, and I've been saved for quite some time, but my main purpose in life right now is to further the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. Are you with me? Huh? And sometimes he asks us, just like Enoch was saying, he's given you a promise, but he asks us to step out of our comfort zone. Yeah. Amen? And if you're not out of that comfort zone yet, believe me, in the days to come and the years, if there is years to come, he's going to ask you to step out of that comfort zone. He's going to ask you to testify and witness to those 
that <laughs> you really don't want to. <laughs> Amen? Because there is, brothers and sisters, there is a harvest coming. And uh, we've had a long time of preparation time. Amen? And I believe that's, uh, that's where we're at is in, in the church history of time. Is The Lord has called us for such a time as this to be prepared to give out that fresh manna, that fresh bread to uh, this next harvest field. Amen? Are you with me? Yes. Now today I want to minister out of uh, Genesis. And, and we're going to start in... in uh, I believe it's um, Genesis 12 is where we're going to start. And I want to talk about Abraham today. You know, there's a lot of stories in the Bible. And if you're a student of the, of the Word, there's a lot of stories in, in the Bible that encourage us. You know, that we read them. You know, guys like David and, 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 and Joseph and, and, and many others, you know, and the, and, and the struggles they went through and the, and the, 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 the successes that they had that there's, there's stories to encourage us and to give us direction. And, and I believe Abraham's one of them. I, I believe the story of Abraham, which you could minister time and time and time again. There's so many aspects of his life and his walk that is an encouragement in, unto us. And, and I believe Abraham is, is one of those, when we get to talking about end times and our preparation in those end times. Let, let's get started. We're going to go to Genesis 12.1. It says, uh, Now Jehovah said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto the land that I will show thee. Uh, We're going to read clear down to four, uh, Jess. I I will make thee a great nation and I will bless thee and make thy name great and be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee and I will curse thee that I will... Thee will I curse, and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. So Abram went as Jehovah had spoken unto him, and Lot went with him. And Abram was seventy and five years old when he departed out of Haran. I'm kind of laughing at myself because Jeff says, I'll try to keep up with you. And I said, well, Jeff's got to slow down. <laughs> so let me a chance to slow down a little bit here. Let's let the Holy Spirit take control here, huh? Uh, see, we understand these first four verses of Genesis is talking about Abram getting up out of Haran. You know, of course, you, you've been in this church, you understand Haran was a, a dry area. You know, uh, Abraham came from a, a family of idol worshipers. You know, if you're a student of the word, you understand where Abram come from. He come from a dry place. He come from a backslid, not even a backslid, people that not even knew Christ or knew God and didn't even care to know who God was. But you know, the word of the Lord came to Abraham and he obeyed. He obeyed. He believed. That's why Abraham is called the father of faith. And you know, the, the Jews, he's their patriarch because he's the first. He's the one that actually started the, the nation of Israel and everything like that. But it's the same way with us. There comes a time in our lives when the Lord calls into you and asks you, say, hey, Jeff or Tony or, or Jim or whoever, there comes a time when he calls out to you, hey, it's time for you to come to my kingdom. Amen? And I'm looking at a lot of familiar faces, so I, I'm believing that we have all had that call. Amen? We've all accepted that time when he has said unto us, you are now a new creation because you have confessed your sins and you have believed upon me. And now I not call you Christian, I call you brother. Amen? If your brother smile with me this morning. Huh? Help me through my stumbling time this morning. Amen? So we know that Abraham, he believes the Lord and he gets up. Now, Abraham just isn't, you know, sometimes when we read that story, we just understand, we think it's Abram and and Sarah that they just get up and move. Well, it truly is not that way. Because he has actually a household of servants. And, I mean, he is a a wealthy man when he leaves. So, he understands, Abram understands that the world has nothing to offer him. But God has something great in store for him. Can you understand that? The world has nothing to offer him, 
But God has something in store for us. See, I think sometimes in the church world, we get so caught up in what's going on in our lives that we forget that the very next step that God has for us is a great, great, great blessing. And we've got to get out of the physical aspects of, of trying to see things as they are and understand that spiritually, oh, we're more than conquerors, but spiritually, we have a great inheritance that lies right before us. See, when Abraham's called, you've got to remember, Abraham's called, he goes to another land, and I'm probably going to get ahead of myself, but you know what? He's always just passing through. He's always passing through. He never lived in a house. He lived in a tent. So he was up and moving all the time. See, we, we can understand that in the very next text uh, with, with uh, Abram that you know, he has believed the Lord. There has been a drought in the land and he shows up in Egypt. Now in Egypt, here's Abram and we know what he's doing. He's not being honest. Huh? He's, he's not living the life that the Lord has just called him. Do you understand me? He's not living the life that the Lord has just called him into. And then he gets called out on it. Because he says, Sarai is my sister. Of course, then the Lord gives Pharaoh a, a dream and says, don't touch that woman. She belongs to Abram. King kicks him, pretty much kicks him out. So where does Abram head back to but to Bethel? See, I skipped over a part there that when Abram had departed Haran, he ends up to a place that's called Bethel. And Bethel truly just means house of God. And there he built an altar. There he sacrificed himself, let's say it spiritually, himself to the Lord. That's where he became born again. That's where, by faith, he believed what the Lord was going to do at Bethel. He goes to Egypt and he stumbles and he fumbles and he doesn't live the life that the Lord has asked him to live. So once again, he goes back to Bethel. Back to the same altar where he first believed. See, that's the Lord. He is so good to us. He says in, in, in 1 John 1, 9, he says, if we confess our sins, and he is, he is faithful to, and just to forgive our sins, and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. See, there's times in our lives, I don't care if you think you're superhuman, super Christian, there's times that we stumble and we fumble. And then the Lord isn't happy about it, but we are human. We are flesh. You know, there'll be a time when we will be spirit, almost all spirit. But now, we struggle in this world. We make mistakes. And I don't, like I said, if you think you're super Christian, I'll promise you there'll come a time when you're going to get your temper trust, uh, tested, you're going to get your patience tested. Am I speaking to anybody? Or is it just me? I mean, there's going to be times in your walk when you're going to get so frustrated, but yet you still know that the Lord is your God. Huh? That's the way Abraham went. He, he knew. He still believed that the Lord was his God. But he had to go back to Bethel, back to the altar, back to the altar, and ask for forgiveness. I have to do that several, I mean, I don't want to say several times, but there's times in my life that I just got to say, Lord, yeah. man, I've, I've blown it. I have blown it. I know you expect more out of me. Help me to overcome this flesh. Yeah. Huh, are you with me, man? But you know what? He still loves us. Huh? He, he doesn't kick us to the side, but he, he, he puts his arms out and says, come on back. I still love you. Man, what an awesome God we serve, eh? Huh? We serve an awesome God that looks past our shortcomings and knows that, that, that he, He's preparing us for a greater work. Wow, I, to me sometimes that's mind-blowing. That, that me, I, just pitiful me, and all the things that I've done in my life, all the st stupid things I've done, all the things that I thought were fun at that time, you know, he allowed me to ask for forgiveness of that. And he forgot it. Now, I, I remember it. I remember it here. You know, and the devil brings it back up. But he forgot it. Amen. And he forgave me for it. And besides that, he wants to prepare me to be used. Just a rotten, stinking vessel. Huh? 
But you know what? He must take that rot and that stink out and put that Holy Spirit in. That Holy Spirit. Huh? Amen. We have an awesome covenant with our Lord Jesus Christ. Sometimes we just don't truly understand just how much he loves us and how much he wants to use us and how much he's preparing us. Preparing us. And I know sometimes with the struggle of my life, I begin to think maybe I should have run for president. <laughs> not, not that they're worthy or the, the two aren't worthy or whatever, but sometimes when you go through the struggles of life and sometimes you just throw your hands up and say, come on, Lord, that's enough. Huh? Give me a breather. Huh? Anybody ever been there? Huh? Don't let this test, let's leave this, t- this is not a test day. This is just a happy day. Huh? Happy, happy, happy. Good things happen. No test. Huh? I have them days. Just give me a happy day. I don't want a test day. <laughs> but we're going to go slip into chapter 13. Like I said, I, I probably won't fall on verse for verse because I want to get to an end point. And, uh, and I, I know I'll get to rambling and, and, and everything, but, but I just want to go over the life of Abram a little bit and... and we can see in chapter 13, if you read down through it, that, that Abram, he's repented. And the Lord has called him out again. And you can see the growth in Abram's life. You know, in tradition, you know, he's got Lot with him now. And they come to a point where there's been a, 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 an argument between the herdsmen, you know. Lot's bunch is, is mad at Abram's bunch. And Abram mad at Lot's bunch. And it's a family thing. And we know how them family things are. Maybe it's just my family. Huh? <laughs> this is a family thing. Sometimes those are the worst things. Huh? You can get mad at a stranger, you don't see him, you don't care. But you're mad at family and it just seems like it's a thorn that just can continue to fuss faster and faster. Thanks for helping me preach. <laughs> you're not done. <laughs> so, Abram says, hey Lot, I can see this isn't going to work out. You choose what land you want. You're in Canaan now. They're in, they're, so, you know, Lot looks and sees the, 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 the area of Sodom. And it's beautiful. The grass has grown up. It's a perfect place for his pasture, for his sheep and everything. So Lot chooses that. Abram heads the other direction. And what amazes me now is... You've got to remember, during this whole story, we're talking about Abram having visitations from the Lord, but we're not talking about Lot having those visitations from the Lord. Have you ever picked that up? And right after Lot departs, but who shows up now? But the Lord. Now I want you to get this right here. This is uh, chapter 13, 14. Now, I'm going to read mine, because boy, I really struggled back there, as you all know, but... It said, and the Lord said to Abraham, after Lot had uh, separated from him, lift your eyes now and look from the place where you are. I want you to catch this. Lift your eyes up and look at the place where you are. Northward, southward, eastward, and westward. I want to stop here for just a second. To me, that's part of the vision of this church. Even though he spoke this into Abraham... I believe that he speaks this into our hearts. Because what lies next, it says, For all the land that you see, I give to you, and your descendants forever. And I will make your descendants as the dust of the earth, so that if a man could uh, uh, number the dust of the earth, then your descendants could be numbered. Arise, walk in the land through its length and its width, for I'll give it unto you. To me, that's another word that the Lord has given this church. Look to the west, look to the east, look to the north, and look to the south. You know, you look in this church and very few of us are from just Scott. Right? Amen? But most of us are from the north, the south, the west, and the east. See, I believe that in this time, that that's our growth. is not just from one area but it's from every area. Amen? I believe that He's asking us in our vision not to be short-sighted, but to open our eyes, to walk through the land knowing that He has given us this harvest. 
Hmm? He has prepared us for this time. I can't, get, I can't get away from that because that is etched in my spirit. That, that I have been born for this day. I have been prepared for this time. And even though I may struggle and stumble over or the, the words that I give people, my heart is full of, of, of being used for this, this end time harvest. So let's look to the east, to the west, to the south, and to the north, because He has given us this land. He has given us this harvest. Amen. See, we're going to understand then the very next chapter, then they've separated, and the Lord has given Abraham a promise, Abram a promise that, that this land is his, and his descendants will own that too. We, you know, we're, we're part of that descendants. We're, we're those children of faith. Amen? Are you a child of faith with me this morning? We understand in the next chapter that, that here, here's Lot, and, and, and uh, there's a war that breaks out amongst a bunch of kings. <laughs> and I'm not going to name them because I, there's no way I could even say them words. <laughs> no way. I can do Sodom and Gomorrah, and they're part of that kingship. And uh, they're defeated. And uh, Lot, is, Lot is, is captured through this. So he's a casualty of war. He's a casualty of the world. And uh, there's, a, there's a messenger that's sent to Abraham, and it's in Genesis 14.14. Uh, um, 14. It says, Now when Abraham heard that his brother was taken captive, he armed his 318 trained servants who were born in his own house and went in and pursued as far as Dan. He divided his forces against them by night, and he and his servants attacked them and pursued them as far as Hoban, which is north of uh, Damascus. So he brought back all the goods, and he also brought back his brother Lot and his and uh, what is that? His goods, as well as the women and the people. I don't write very well either. So, <laughs> but see, brothers and sisters, this is where we're at today. We have brothers and we have sisters that have been captured by this world. Huh? Some of them willingly. Some of them not willingly. They've fallen in the stray of this world system. They've, they've lived a life of sin and they've enjoyed it. And they really, I say this time and time again because I see it. They don't care whether a God exists or not. They're having too much fun in life right now. So you're blessed because God has called upon your heart and He's showing you that there's more to life than the now. That we are just merely just strangers passing through. But that He has a promised land waiting for us. So you're blessed because you've heard that call. But a lot of people have not heard that call. The train, the 300, what is it, 318 train of His household, that's this church. You know, the Lord has given a lifetime, He, he has ministered a lifetime into your hearts and into your lives through situations, through struggles, through celebrations, for, from good happenings to bad happenings, He has built you up to become the vessel, that trained vessel, to go get your brother and sister. And that is this time right now. That is this time right now. And, I, and uh, of course, Abram recovers. And we understand that the, the king of Sodom comes back and says, Hey, all them things that you've got, he says, you can keep. But he said, I want my people back. And, uh, of course, Abram says, I'm giving it all back to you. Because I don't want anybody to get credit but my Lord Jesus Christ. See, this is, this is where... Mc, Mc, all right, come on. Melchizedek. Mel, Melchizedek. Is that it? No, anybody else going to try it? I got dry mouth and dry lips, so it's not coming out at all. <laughs> a type of a type of Christ, not Christ, but a type of Christ. Abram gives him a tithe. So what he does here is he 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 shows that that the Lord gets the credit and not Abram, and that's where we're to be when this harvest comes. We're not. It's not going to be about Scott Harvestfield Church. It's going to be about Christ because. What he promised us, he says, hey, he says, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. He says, it's not about 
you being lifted up. It's not about the church being lifted up. But in these end times, it's about Christ being lifted up in our lives. See, I tell you, if, if He's lifted up in our lives, people will notice that. Huh? And that's, you can't tell me that the king of Sodom did not see that upon Abram's life. When he would not take none of the spoils, because that was always the given, is when there was battle, they got to receive the spoils. And that would be either always with the people and the goods. But see, he gave it all back to, he gave it all back to the king because he did not want to take any credit for himself. It all, he wanted to be all the Lord. Amen? We're rounding up. We're getting ready to draw around the corner. So, and I want to go back to Genesis 15.1. We're going to read that one. And then you've got to remember that, like I said, this has just been a victory. And once again, there's another separation here. He has come and gotten, he, he has saved Lot. And, and, and Lot goes back to his old life. And once again, the Lord approaches Abram and, and, and he gives him another promise. He says, and after these sayings, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision saying, Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, your exceedingly great reward. See, I believe at this time that the Lord specially encourages Abraham, just like he's encouraging the church right now, that to be strong, be of good courage, because the times that are coming up next, it's a tough, tough road. You are going to be harassed. You are going to be laughed at. You're going to get the opportunity to, to, to witness to people, and they are just going to, they're going to make a mockery of you because they don't want to hear it. But he tells you to be strong and to be of good courage because he is your exceedingly great reward. Huh? When you get to slip into the spiritual aspect of things, you understand that it's not about earthly values, but it's receiving that spiritual victory. Amen? Amen. Genesis... Uh, 15, 5, and 8. And we're going to do this, and then we're going to kind of turn the corner just a little bit to where, truly where we want to get. And sometimes it just, you know, the, the, the word and the preaching, it, it gets a little bit hard to pick up, but you've got to lay foundation to know where you're getting. Amen? So you've been good. You've been following along. You've been helping me with my words and, and, and everything, and, and so I know you're listening. And I see some smiles, so that works out well too, so... Genesis 15, 5 through 8. It says, Then he brought him outside and he said, Look now toward heaven and count the stars if, if you are able to number them. And he said to him, So shall your descendants be. And he believed in the Lord and he accounted to, and he accounted to him for righteousness. Then he said to him, I am the Lord who brought you out of the Ur of the Chaldeans to give you this land and inherit it. And he said, Lord God, how shall I know that I will inherit it? How shall I know that I will inherit it? See, I think every once in a while in our life, the Lord will slow us down and settle us down, and He'll, He'll, He'll allow us to bring some things to our remembrance. The days when I, like I said, I was that stinky vessel. I was in that life that didn't honor the Lord. He'll remind me of how He brought me through that lifetime, how he brought me from some of the struggles of life to bring me to this point, to this point, to once again remind me and encourage me that the work that we, lies ahead for us is going to be a good work because he's doing it and he's looking into each and every heart to be prepared for that time. See, and right after that, I just want to show you, right after that, the, the Lord cuts covenant with Abraham. If you read the sacrifices that come up behind that, the Lord cuts covenant with Abraham. And he does the same thing for us. See, his covenant that he made for us started right here. Huh? Right here. See, I know that, that I'm a blessed man, not because of who Jeff is, but I'm a blessed man because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Huh? See, I know I can sit up here and talk about being prepared to be used and, 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 and winning souls to the, to the kingdom, but it all starts here. 
at the foot of the cross. You know, they all come here too at the foot of the cross. See, he makes no difference. He doesn't care if it's Enoch or it's Jeff or it's Fred. We've all came the same way. All came the same way. See, the story of Abram is a story of faith. The story where he continues to speak into the heart of Abraham and grow him. If you read the whole story, he grows him at times. But he encourages him. And he uses him to once again go back and get his family. And we're going to go through that again here pretty soon because you know that day gone lot? He just can't stay out of trouble. He, can't stay, he cannot get out of where it's bad for him. Huh? We, anybody else got any family members like that? Huh? The whole world's full of them. But there's going to come a time. There's going to come a time when he's going to take care of it. See, he tells Abraham of the, of, of the future at the end of that chapter. He, he tells Abraham that actually the, the, the Israelites are going to be held captive. And, and, and they're going to be released after a certain period of time. And you know, the Lord's done the same thing for us too in this, this covenant right here, this book. He's told us what lies ahead for us. Has He told you? He's told me. He's told me about a new heaven and a new earth. He's promised me that He has went to the, the, the Father's house as many mansions. And that He's went and prepared a place for me. See, we spend you know, 60, 70, 20, 30, 40, 50, 90, 100 years on this earth and we think that's the end of life. It's just, it is not. It's just passing through. You know, and we get the opportunity as Christians to sit here and prepare for what's next. But our biggest job lies right ahead is for that harvest. Is for that harvest. Amen. I, Enoch, I want you to come back up and sing that song that I asked you to, to sing. Thomas, one moment, please. I'm going to, God brought something to me there. I'm going to hitchhike right off of what you said, Jeff, about the encouragement part. Do we each have an accountability person in our life? You see, God, His Word, we can talk to Him always. But do we have that one person in church or wherever that we can count on? We can tell them anything we want to. And we know they're always looking out for our best interests. You know that they're going to pray. They're going to lift you up in prayer. They're going to be there to kind of help protect you. They're going to let you know maybe when things are not, you're doing things that you shouldn't be doing. But that accountability person, we all need one of them to encourage, to keep us in this walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, I was, I was thinking of our light in these last days, our walk with the Lord. Should our light with Jesus in every day start getting brighter and brighter and brighter, just as the sun when it comes up in the morning? Maybe a haze, maybe kind of dim, but as the day grows on, it gets brighter and brighter until it is, is really bright. Should that be our walk with the Lord? Every day we walk, our light would be getting brighter and brighter for the Lord. So the unsaved, there's no other way they're going to see or they're going to hear unless we show them, unless we tell them about the saving grace of Jesus Christ. I know we all should probably know this song. Sing it along with me. <laughs> 